From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs, Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of jungle orchids. Everything about Edwina Clark formed a strange contradiction. Her name and her fair skin proclaimed her to be English, and yet she had the almond eyes and the high cheekbones of the Orient. Her face had a classic beauty, unlined and extremely youthful, but her hair was silver gray, and her serene manner, her apparent gentleness, was perhaps the strangest contradiction of all when one took into consideration the great bullwhip which seldom left her hand. Edwina's shop, like the others in the flower bazaar of Becorata, consisted of crude stalls, but behind hers was a magnificent modern greenhouse in which she spent most of her waking hours. My poor, sweet darling. You look so ill. You speak to me, Moana? I spoke to this poor, ailing orchid plant. My heart weeps to see it die. It most beautiful orchid, but was half dead when native bring from jungle. I know. Have you ever seen anything so incredibly lovely, Uga? Uga, take to other side of greenhouse where it get more light. No! I don't want you to touch it! Put it back! You clumsy, stupid fool! You dropped my lovely orchid! You killed it! No, Moana! No use whip! Please, Moana! No! 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 Far from the flower bazaar of Becorata, Torgo, the small native boy, wandered among the flowers of the jungle. He'd been warned against straying from the village of his people, but it was spring, and the fascination of nature had been too great. He was deep in a wooded glen that overflowed with brightly hued aristea, leucodendron, acacia, and orchids, when the rumble of heavy hooves and the trumpeting of elephants brought sudden terror to his heart. tightly while I grab this vine and swing up into the trees. Yeah. Oh, just in time. Torgo had bow and arrows, you're not afraid. Torgo, you have to learn that with or without your bow and arrows, you must not come into the jungle alone. But Tarzan say elephants his friends. Yes. Yes, it is true. I, I have made friends among the elephants, but when they are hunting for something, they are blind to everything except that for which they seek. Elephants look for water? No, no, there's a great deal of water in the mountain country at this time of year. I, I think they have a craving for salt. They require it for their great bodies. Tundra look for chumvi? That's right. There are several licks near here, though the elephants' trips in past years have greatly reduced the amount of chumvi to be found in this area. When elephants find licks, they be good. <laughs> That's right. Give a man or a beast what he hunts for, and he'll be good. But as long as a search is on, either one is dangerous. Torgo come into woods, search for flowers. Oh, they are beautiful. Particularly those, those great orchids over there, the ones with the orange center. Well, Torgo, if you have to hunt for something, I guess flowers are best. Elephants searching for salt almost killed you. Tarmangani searching for gold or oil or uranium have often threatened my life. Hunting for flowers is good, eh, Tarzan? And flowers are used as gifts to those who are sick or to someone whose beauty you admire. One cannot imagine anyone who searches for beautiful flowers having an ugly heart. Tarzan like people who search for flowers. <laughs> well, so far, no one has ever brought a safari into the jungle for flowers. But if one should come, they'd win my respect and trust. <laughs> We'll return to our story of jungle orchids in just a moment. Attached to the greenhouse of Edwina Clark's flower mart was her office. Like its owner, it too was a strange contradiction. The walls were of teak wood inlaid with mother of pearl. 
but English hunting prints adorned the wall. Somehow, though, the place suited Edwina. Her visitor did not seem so much at home. I just dropped in to tell you, Edwina, that this latest victim of your whip is in very bad shape. He had it coming. He, uh, he tried to steal a, a valuable book from my office. Nonsense. I've known Uga for years. Wouldn't touch anything that doesn't belong to him. He probably bruised a leaf of one of your precious plants. Yes, that's true, Bertie, but don't be hard on me. You know what I'm like when someone injures a flower. It's as though I saw someone torturing a child. I want to kill them. You're lucky you haven't killed someone already. You'll be in a bad way if Uga decides to go to the elephant about this. Oh, for heaven's sake. You know Uga's word would never be taken against mine in the court. No, a native hasn't much chance. Well, I thought you should know about the boy's condition. I've got to buzz off now. Now, don't be angry with me, Bertie. Stay long enough to drink a gin and tonic and smoke a hookah. Honestly, Edwina, I sometimes think you make a fetish of strange combinations. Gin and tonic and a hookah. It's like combining caviar and kippers or snails with corned beef and cabbage. Am I any less of a strange combination? You're not the only product of a roving Englishman and a harem beauty. And we're all unhappy. We belong to neither one group nor the other. I thought you were happy. In Africa. Well, why do you stay here? Because it's the one place where your ancestry or your past isn't questioned. And, of course, I have my orchids. Ah, yes, the orchids. Well, I think I'll forego the drink, Edwina. But uh, while I'm here, you might tell me about that new species, the huge orchid with the orange center. I don't know its name. It has no name. It's completely unknown. A black brought the plant from the jungle, and then he disappeared. But now that lone plant I had is dead. Ah, too bad. If you could have supplied me with orchids of that variety, we could have made a fortune in foreign markets. I've never seen an orchid of such beauty or size. How much could I make if I were able to supply you with orchids like that? No, oh, the field's limitless, Edwina. Millions, maybe. Millions? With that amount of money, I could go anywhere. Edwina Clark would be accepted. Beauty's not enough. My mother found that out. Now, Edwina, there's no use getting off on that tack again. After I all... I could live in Paris, London, any place. The beautiful, wealthy Edwina Clark... Discoverer of the rare and costly Edwina orchid. Edwina, there's no use making dreams about a species you probably couldn't find even if you went into the jungle, and which you wouldn't have a chance of bringing back to civilization in proper condition to sell. I'll find them. I'll bring them back. And I'll make that fortune. Nothing will stop me. Several weeks later, the strangest safari ever to invade Tarzan's jungle hacked its way through the almost impenetrable forest. Almost a dozen bearers cut a wide path for a huge ox-drawn van. But despite the size and the impressiveness of the house on wheels, the members of the safari were on foot. One glimpse of the gentle-looking Edwina was enough to allay Tarzan's usual suspicions of the Tarmangani. The heat of the jungle had done nothing to disturb her carefully groomed appearance, and she smiled sweetly and caressed each jungle blossom that crossed her path. You seem to like flowers. What? Oh, you scared me half to death. I'm sorry. I purposely made a little noise as I jumped from the tree. I, I guess the sound of the chopping... You must be Tarzan. <laughs> yes, I am. How do you know of me? It's a strange story, but my name is Edwina Clark. I have a stall in the flower bazaar in Bicorata. I have been to Bicorata, but we did not meet. Had I encountered anyone as beautiful as you, I would not have forgotten. Thank you. No, we did not meet. But recently, a native came from the jungle with a rare orchid plant. He said the Tarzan had suggested its sale as a means of raising money. Oh, yes, that was Anduta. <laughs> I was helping him make enough to buy six head of cattle and the price of the bride he desired. So you are the one who purchased the great orchid with the orange heart. I paid him for it, and then I, uh, I started to ask questions. About me? About the orchid. But as soon as the money was in his hands, he disappeared into the jungle. I've come a long way to find orchids like that one. So far, I've had no luck. I can lead you to them. What a wonderful coincidence. Meeting you. <laughs> the, the coincidence does not stop there. It was scarcely a moon ago that I told Torgo, he's a small native boy who was my friend, that if a miracle came to pass and a hunter came to search for flowers, I would lend every assistance. 
How wonderful of you. The fact that the one I am to help is both beautiful and gentle makes the task a most pleasant one. Edwina, the longer I remain in your camp, the more unusual I find you. In what way? Oh, in every way. That, that whip with which you hope to defend yourself against jungle animals. Coming here with only native bearers and a scary, and this fantastic van with doors built like a vault and no sleeping accommodations. Come here. What's that? It's a compressor. It makes ice. The ice goes in these spaces over here. And once the road is cut, I can take orchids back to Beccarata quickly in this van. Hmm. That's more important than sleeping accommodation. But that, that small compressor won't make very much ice. Enough. The outside of the van is heavy metal. The inside is cork, an excellent insulator. And we have a large supply of rock salt to help keep the ice. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I'm afraid, though, Edwina, your men will never be able to get this clumsy van to the valley where the orchids you want grow in large numbers. I have to, Tarzan. I have to get it through. Well, if it's that important, we'll manage. But not with manpower. What then? You'll see. The safari pushed slowly ahead as Tarzan left it to speed in another direction through the upper level of jungle growth. He traveled half that night and far into the next day, and at last he reached the land of an elephant herd he had known when he was a boy, unaware of other humans. Now he climbed to the top of a great rock and gave the cry that was known to every denizen of the jungle. a slight scent of the elephant, yet they do not come. Perhaps they've forgotten me. Anto! Tarzan! You! You remember Tarzan, don't you, old friend? <laughs> ah, you still like to have your trunk tickled, don't you? I made no mistake in coming here. Some young bulls passed me on the way to the salt licks, but they had no time for me. Here. Here, kneel down. I I'll whisper something in your ear. That's the boy. Now then, I want you to help me do a favor for a beautiful lady. Well, I'm afraid you don't understand that, but perhaps I can accomplish my mission if I'm on your back. I'll get up on that limb and... Next time you're going to grab me in your trunk and haul me to your back, I wish you'd let me know. <laughs> well, maybe you did understand about the beautiful lady. Let's go, Tantor. Manupara, why are we stopped? Men, stop chopping. Talk to a small native boy who comes. Well, please ask him to keep the safari moving. We can't be sure Tarzan will, will come back with help. Small boy, look for Tarzan. I'll talk to the boy. You tell the men to go ahead with their chopping. Nadio. Anza machi. Minda upesi moana. Dogo toto. Nadio, headman tell me come to you, Nawana. I hear you were looking for Tarzan. Me Torgo, friend of Tarzan. Well, then we should be friends, for he is a friend of mine. You look like a very nice boy. You look very beautiful lady. Ah. What are you doing? Tarzan say give flower to one who beautiful. I get pretty flower here. Now I give it to beautiful Moana. You, you've torn it out by the roots. What you do? You've killed it. you killed the flower. No, Moana. Not use whip, I'm boy. No. No. I shall not miss you with an axe stroke. No, no, not her toy go. So no, we'll no, stop no, you, no, child. No, no. Run, no, Togo! No. Run for life! We'll be back in just a moment with the exciting conclusion of Jungle Orchids. Tarzan, perched high on the back of Tantor, the elephant, advanced rapidly toward the Punya country. His eyes searched the district, 
where his intention was to find the trail of Edwina Clark's safari. Suddenly, Tarzan's sensitive nostrils quivered. The stick he was using as an anchor to guide the elephant bid the great beast stop. And in one quick movement, the lord of the jungle slid to the ground. Torgo, what has happened to you? You're bleeding. White Marana beat Torgo with whip. Those are not the marks of a whip. Our marks of thorns. Beautiful lady, try hit Torgo. Torgo run away. Not run, watch in front. Run into thorns. Torgo, I don't know what you've been up to or why you've invented this fantastic story, but... You are hurt. Now, I'll, I'll take you to Mama Nagama, huh? Torgo, not to lie. I've told you not to come into the jungle alone. It's clear that you disobeyed me and that you've made up this story to divert me. But blaming your injuries on the Moana is not very gallant of you. It's truth. Well, I, I shall take you to your village. And then I shall find out what really happened at the safari of Edwina Clark. <laughs> You are Manyapara, headman of safari? Naviho, Buana. Then you can tell me what happened to the small native boy who just staggered from your camp. No native boy here. Well, he must have been here. No native boy here. You're lying. He spoke of a beautiful white Buana. He did not make that up. Please speak, Buana. Not make poor black men tell. Me talk, feel whip of Moana. You are afraid of a slender, gentle woman, one who has come to the jungle to search for flowers? That's ridiculous. Well, I can get the truth from her. Where is she? In Hema, beside the van that make cold. She say is conjoa. She's sick? So that's why you've the temerity to tell lies about her. I'll see if there's anything I can do for her. We shall settle this later, Manyapara. One o'clock. Edwina, it is Tarzan. May I enter your Hema? Come in. Oh, you are sick. Let me feel your brow. Mm, there's no sign of fever. Perhaps it is nothing. Maybe in the morning I'll feel quite well again. Oh, the fever that remains within the body is sometimes the most dangerous. Your life may be at stake. My life is meaningless unless I can find what I came for. The Edwina Orchid. Well, I, I have brought an elephant to help clear the path. I left it at a little distance from here so I would not alarm the porters and bearers, but I do not advise going on. I must hearten. Please help me. You did promise me. Yes, I did, but my promise wavered for a moment when I heard a strange story from Torgo, a small native boy who was in your camp. A darling child. I tried to get him to remain with the safari, but he became shy and ran off. He says you attempted to strike him with your whip. Oh. Well, oh. Uh, you were in pain? Oh, my heart. Oh, you should return to Bakurata, where there are doctors, but... Well, if you will not, Tantor and I will help you bring the great van to the valley where the orchid grows. Dawn found the safari drawing close to the fertile valley where the rare orchids grew in great abundance. Tantor the elephant plunged ahead, cutting a wide path through which the van and its precious ice-making machine moved easily. Near Tantor, guiding him, walked Tarzan, and beside the lord of the jungle walked a miraculously recovered Edwina. Vash, Tantor! Close your eyes, Edwina. What? Close your eyes and take my hand. All right. There. When we round this great rock, you will be in the valley of the Edwina orchids. Now, open your eyes, Edwina. My orchids? A whole valley of my orchids? Oh, Tarzan is a dream of a lifetime come true. Oh, it gives me great happiness. Bas, Tantor! Stop, I told you! Look! That great clumsy beast has stepped on one of my orchids. Oh, there are many of them, sure. Ed Edwina, what are you doing? I'll show that ungainly, stupid animal why. No, don't use your whip on Tantor. Oh. Well, what are you doing? I want to strike Tantor. Oh. Edwina, give me that whip. No, no, Tantor. Down. Down. No, no, Tantor. Oh, she made a mistake, Tantor. Good boy. Good boy. Gentle now. Quiet. There, now, now stay here. Don't move. I'm sorry. I saw him crush one of my orchids, and I... I guess I lost my head. You are lucky you did not strike him. He would have killed you. Even now you may be in danger at any moment. I'm sure he sensed your intention, and an elephant is famous for its memory. I didn't know what I was doing. Now I believe Torgo's story and the fright of your bearers and the manyapara of the safari. Where are the bearers and the headman called? They fled. They saw you about to strike Tantor, and they feared that he would kill everyone within sight. I doubt that they will return. 
And I suppose you will leave me now, too. I shall keep my promise. The van is now filled with ice? Yes, it's like the North Pole inside it. I shall help you gather the orchids and carry them into the van. And then Tantor and I will take the van and you as far as the Punya country. There you may be able to engage new porters to accompany you to Becorata. But I warn you, do not attempt to use that whip again. <laughs> Edwina Clark was still beautiful, but for Tarzan, she had lost all beauty because of the cruelty he had found in her. However, he had made a promise, and as the day wore on, he worked hard, gathering orchids in his great hands and carrying them within the house on wheels. Oh, ah, it's like the mountaintops in there. The ice is keeping better than I thought it would. The rock salt helps. I'm closing in tightly each time. Did you slide the bar? <laughs> yes, I slid the bar. It isn't strange that the ice remains firm. Even Tantor couldn't escape from that box. Well, another few loads and the van will be filled. I guess I'll go to the other side of the clearing. There's some here, right by the big rock. All right, I'll help you pick these, and then if we haven't enough, I'll get those on the other side. All right, here's one right here. I almost stepped on it. You did step on it. You crushed it beneath your clumsy feet. I didn't step on the flower. I, I might have crushed a leaf, but... Edwina! You like all the rest. You don't love flowers. I Put that brick down. I told you if you had a... I do. Oh. Oh. Oh, then. I think this whip has bitten into the flesh of enough victims of your insanity. You, you broke my whip. If I had not dug my nails into my hands in order to control myself, I might not have stopped at breaking that whip. I'm sorry. I never mean to hurt anyone, but... Uh... I will hear no more false talk about your being sorry. I shall put this orchid, which is perfectly unharmed, within the van, and then we shall leave this valley. It, it's not full yet. I'm sorely tempted to empty it. He did crush it. He crushed a flower. These beautiful flowers here. How anyone who loves flowers can be as you are, Edwina. Well, you shall not return here. Not as long as I am lord of the jungle. Not return here? I thought at first that you were... No. I shall return, Tarzan. I shall return many times. After you have frozen to death. You won't escape from that van. You won't. You'll freeze to death. You will. You will. <laughs> and Tarzan gradually lost consciousness. Edwina stood looking at the van, staring at it like one hypnotized. Tantor had wandered off, attracted by the scent of others of his kind. Now he joined the elephants who had been to the almost exhausted salt licks and returned with their craving for salt still unsatisfied. Suddenly they caught the acrid scent of the pure rock salt. It sent strong even though it was inside a van of metal. They charged on the box, beat against it with their mammoth trunks and great hooves until it broke into a thousand pieces. The young bulls fell upon the rock salt, but the trunk of an old elephant reached in and grasped an almost frozen body before it could be smashed beneath the mighty hooves. Tarzan awoke later, his body warmed by the equatorial sun. Edwina? Uh, over here. Dying. What happened? The, the van. You? Elephants. They... They crushed the van. And me... Saved you. You know there is little I can do for you now. Only... Only one thing... Bury me there at the entrance to the valley and place in my hand one perfect orchid. An Edwina orchid. In just a moment, a word about our next story of Tarzan. The Cassania Railway is a puny affair compared to the great railroads of civilized countries. It runs on narrow-gauge tracks, its engines are antiquated, 
and it passes through no great cities as it winds north from Africa's Gold Coast. But it carries millions of dollars of gold bullion, a temptation to those who dream of wealth and are willing to brave the terrors of the jungle in order to achieve it. Tarzan, a transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>